Welcome to our show, The China Briefing. Today, we dive into some intriguing stories shaping the world around us. First up, the Chinese ambassador to New Zealand has issued a stark warning regarding the potential repercussions of New Zealand joining the Orca Security Pact. He argues that such a move could jeopardize the long-standing relationship between the two nations, raising questions about nuclear non-proliferation and regional stability. Meanwhile, New Zealand's Labour leader has expressed scepticism about the benefits of AUKUS, putting the nation's interests at the forefront. Next, we turn our attention to the nostalgic town of Pino Luin, once a beloved British colonial hill station in Myanmar. The town, known for its cool climate and rich multicultural history, now faces significant challenges following the military takeover in 2021. The author reflects on their visits, capturing the beauty and complexity of a place that has seen better days, as ongoing conflict and instability threaten its future. The contrast between its historical charm and current turmoil paints a poignant picture of change. Lastly, in the world of sports, Bayer Leverkusen has made headlines with a stunning 5-0 victory over Red Bull Salzburg in the Champions League. Young star Florian Wurtz was instrumental, scoring twice and showcasing his talent on a grand stage. This emphatic win not only ties Leverkusen's biggest victory in European competition but also solidifies their place in the top eight of the standings. What a day for football fans! Please stay tuned for more detailed coverage of these fascinating stories. Australian Broadcasting Corporation reports that the Chinese ambassador to New Zealand, Wang Xiaolong, has issued a stern warning regarding New Zealand's potential involvement in the Orca Security Pact involving Australia, the United States, and the United Kingdom. He expressed that joining AUKUS would lead to detrimental impacts on New Zealand's relationship with China, particularly highlighting concerns over the transfer of nuclear materials. Dr. Wang articulated that such a move would undermine the integrity of the Non-Proliferation Treaty and warned of the fragility of trust in international relations. In response, New Zealand's Labour leader Chris Hipkins stated that foreign policy should prioritise New Zealand's interests rather than be dictated by external powers, expressing scepticism about the benefits of AUKUS for New Zealand. Nikkei Asia reflects on the colonial history of the former British hill station, Pino Luin, in Myanmar, which has become increasingly precarious amid ongoing conflict. The town, known for its eucalyptus-scented air and colonial architecture, served as a summer retreat for British administrators. The author recalls their visits, where they encountered remnants of the colonial past and a diverse population, including descendants of those who came to serve the British. Despite its charm, the town's colonial legacy has contributed to ongoing divisions in Myanmar, and the current political instability has rendered it unsafe for travel, with locals living in fear of the fighting that surrounds them. The author laments the disruption caused by civil war, casting doubt on the future of this once peaceful locale. Yahoo! US highlights a dominant performance by Bayer Leverkusen in their Champions League match against Red Bull Salzburg, with Florian Wurtz emerging as a star player. Wurtz opened the scoring with a penalty and quickly followed up with a stunning goal, setting the tone for a commanding victory. Alejandro Grimaldo also made his mark with a brilliant free kick, while Patrick Schick and substitute Alex Garcia rounded off the scoring. This victory not only marked Leverkusen's joint biggest win in European competition but also solidified their position among the top teams in the league phase, while Salzburg struggled to recover from their fourth defeat in five matches. Associated Press reports that the election results in the southwest states, including Arizona, Nevada, and New Mexico, were certified without the controversies that marred the process two years ago. The Arizona Secretary of State confidently stated that the era of election denialism is behind us, a sentiment echoed by others, though some remain skeptical. The calm certification process this year is attributed in part to Donald Trump's victory, which has quelled dissent among his supporters who previously questioned election integrity. Despite the smooth proceedings, lingering doubts among certain factions of the Republican Party suggest that future elections may still see disputes over certification, especially as public confidence in election processes has waned since 2020. Nikkei Asia highlights Xiaomi's ambitious plans to expand its physical retail presence in China, aiming to operate 20,000 stores by the end of 2025. This marks a significant shift for the company, 
which began as an online-only retailer in 2010. The company is capitalizing on the excitement surrounding its new electric vehicles, with plans to open 120 stores capable of showcasing these vehicles within shopping centers. While Xiaomi's home electronics sales are on the rise, it still faces stiff competition in the appliance market. The company is also pivoting towards in-house product development to enhance its offerings. However, the move towards physical stores runs counter to broader industry trends, as brick-and-mortar sales have been declining. According to The Guardian, Ding Liren maintained his lead in the World Chess Championship against Gukesh Domaraju after their second game ended in a draw. Following Ding's victory in the first game, the overall score stands at 1.5 to 0.5 in favor of the defending champion. Gukesh, playing as black, expressed satisfaction with the draw, emphasizing the importance of not taking unnecessary risks early in the match. Ding, on the other hand, admitted to feeling somewhat unsettled during the game but was content with the outcome. As they prepare for the next match, Gukesh will have the advantage of playing as white, and both players remain optimistic about the upcoming games in the championship series. The Globe and Mail highlights the precarious position of Canadian politicians as they navigate the tumultuous waters of trade relations amidst Donald Trump's threats of imposing a 25% tariff on products from both Canada and Mexico. This situation has prompted Canadian leaders to consider distancing themselves from Mexico to appease the United States, a strategy that could undermine Canada's long-standing trade objectives and reputation as a reliable partner. The article warns that sacrificing Mexico could lead to detrimental economic consequences for Canadian industries, particularly in the automotive sector, which relies heavily on cross-border supply chains. The author argues that Canada should instead collaborate with Mexico to address trade issues creatively, rather than capitulating to the pressures of the Trump administration. Foreign policy provides insight into the potential fallout from Trump's tariff threats, particularly concerning China. The incoming president has indicated plans for new tariffs on Chinese goods, which could provoke a multifaceted response from Beijing, including potential trade restrictions that may surprise US businesses. The article underscores the likelihood of tariffs being imposed, given the bipartisan consensus on competition with China. It also suggests that countries like Vietnam, Kazakhstan, and Malaysia could benefit from the shifting trade landscape as companies seek alternatives to Chinese manufacturing. Furthermore, the piece discusses China's role in global climate negotiations and its internal challenges, including recent social unrest, all of which illustrate the complex dynamics at play in international trade and diplomacy as the new administration takes shape. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6DO team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6DO Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6DO team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6DO Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6DO Brief via email.